Okay, hi everybody. We're going to keep talking about functions now and we're going to look at the sort of three most basic observations that you can make about a function. And these turn out to be really fundamental throughout mathematics. And I know that you've seen them all before. Uh, they t for some reason, they tend to get twisted around in people's minds. So hopefully on this run through, everybody will become experts on them. And those three things are one-to-one -one functions, onto functions, and one-to-one -one correspondences. And we have new names for those three properties. Uh, uh, we talk about injective functions, surjective functions, and bijective functions, which is the correct modern mathematical terminology. So let's see if we can remember what these things are, or if you've never seen them before, look at them for the first time and see uh, why they are important characteristics of functions. So, as I mentioned, we're gonna, well, we'll start with, um, with the definition of injective and surjective functions. And you, as if you have seen these before, injective is the same as what used to be called a one-to-one -one function, and a surjective function is what used to be called an onto function. And, um, at the heart of this, as in many of the things we've talked about recently, is quant are quantifiers. So this is um, yet another chance to make sure that you're clear on how quantifiers work. So let's start with a definition. And I'm taking this directly from the book. It's definition 12.4. Let f from a to b be a function. Then f is called injective if for all pairs, A and A prime in the domain, A is the domain, we have the condition, if A is not equal to A, then F of A is not equal to F of A prime. So just to um, sort of remind you about things like this, this is a for all A, for all A prime, there is, uh, there's no there exists. If A is not equal to A prime, then F of A is not equal to F of A prime. So let's look at just a very simple example of an injective function. Let's suppose that F is a function from the real numbers to itself, given by the formula F of X equals 3X plus 2. How do we test that F is injective? proposition. F is injective. Proof. Well, we have to check the, the condition. So let's let A and A prime be elements of the real numbers, which is the domain of our function. And now we have to check an if-then statement, and we're going to do it by direct proof. So we're going to assume the hypothesis a is not equal to a prime. Well, then f of a is equal to 3a plus 2, and f of a prime is equal to 3a prime plus 2. And if a and a prime are not equal to each other, then 3a plus 2 is not equal to 3a prime plus 2. And how could you check that? Well, if that's why it's often this is not the most convenient. A direct proof is often not the most. I mean, maybe this is obvious, right? Three a these two numbers are different. If you take three times one number and add two, and three times another number and add two, you get different numbers. So maybe this is sufficient. But it's much more common to prove the contrapositive. Uh, the contrapositive of the definition of the conditional statement that occurs in the definition is if f of a so f is injective if for all a a prime in a if f of a equals f of a prime then a equals a prime that's the contrapositive of this if then statement. And now with our function, it's actually easier to check because what we do is we say we choose a and a prime in R. 
And we suppose, whoops, we suppose that f of a, which is 3a plus 2, equals f of a prime, which is 3a prime plus 2. And now we can use algebra. So if 3a plus 2 equals 3a prime plus 2, then 3a equals 3a prime, and a equals a prime. And so we've proved the contrapositive. We've shown that if, we, if f of a is equal to f of a prime, then a is equal to a prime. In other words, if a were not equal to a prime, then f of a would not be equal to f of a prime. This shows that f is injective. So maybe that's not particularly informative about what an injective function means, but it's an example of how you can directly apply the definition in order to prove that a function is injective. The kind of sibling of an injective function is a surjective function, sometimes called an onto function. And the condition for a function to be surjective is if for all b in the b is the codomain here. Remember, f is a function from a to b. If for all b in the codomain, there exists an a and a such that f of a is equal to b. So the only comment I make here is it depends on what the codomain is. Um, basically, what you're saying is that a function is surjective if its codomain is equal to its range. So let's look at an example. Let's take our same function. f is a function from r to r. f of x equals 3x plus 2. To prove that f is surjective, we have to show that for all b in r, there exist an a in r so that f of a equals b. We must show Well, let's find that a. In other words, 3a plus 2, which is f of a, has to equal b. And b is a real number. So if we let b, sorry, a equal b minus 2 over 3, then f of a is 3 times b minus 2 over 3 plus 2 is b. So we have found an a which satisfies the condition f of a equals b, and therefore f is surjective or onto. So these are two very basic examples but not very informative ones. And, and so I think this picture, which I've stolen directly from the textbook, may help to illustrate the difference between injective and surjective functions. And maybe I'll just say a bijective function means surjective and injective. So here we have a diagram, um, and let's look here. So here is a function which is, let's look first in this box. This, bo this function is surjective, but not injective. So first of all, why is it surjective? Surjective means for every point in the codomain, there's a point in the range so that f of a equals b. In other words, every point in the codomain gets hit by a point in the range. If you were looking at a graph of a function of a real variable, cert, then here the, the codomain is r and the domain is r, and you would be saying that every point in the codomain gets hit by at least one point in the domain. In other words, every horizontal line hits the graph in exactly, in at least one point. 
Maybe more than one point, but at least one point. Um, in this picture, where we have an injective function, which is, let's look over here. Here we have an injective function, but not a surjective function. So injective means that different points in the domain go to different points in the codomain. So remember, the definition of, of injective is a not equal to a prime implies f of a not equal to f of a prime. And so here you see 1 and 2 are different, and so they go to different values in the codomain. Whereas this function, the one we looked at before, there are different values in the domain, 1 and 3, which both go to 5. So this condition here fails over here, because 1 and 3 both go to 5. This is the definition here of injective. If we look in the, the corner here, which is both surjective and injective, in other words, which is bijective, then to check injectivity, we see that each of the points in the domain goes to a different point in the codomain. That's this condition. Different points in the domain go to different points in the codomain. And the surjective condition is for all A in the codomain, there exists B in the domain with f of A equals B. This is the definition of surjective. And so in other words, every point in the codomain has to get hit by an arrow from the domain. And you see that's true here, and it's true here in these two cases. But in this case, 6 is not hit by anything from the domain. And in this case, it's not either. This particular example fails, the, the one down here fails both conditions. Because 5 gets hit by two arrows. So it's not true that different elements in the domain go to different elements in the range because 1 and 3 are the same elements of the domain and they go to the same elements of the range. And it's not surjective because 6 is not hit by anything from the domain. So to go back to the R cross R picture, we've seen that a, a function is surjective if every horizontal line hits the curve, the graph, in at least one point. What does injective mean? Injective means, let's draw this curve here. It means that if I draw a horizontal line, I'm, if I do hit the curve, then I can only hit it in one point. Because you see, if a, if a line hits the, let's, let me, um, let me bend this a little bit. If a line hits the curve in two points, that means that there are two A's, which are not equal to each other, but F of A equals F of A prime. So this is not injective. This one is surjective. Is it injective? Well, to be injective is to mean that there's no two points on the x-axis which have the same value on the y-axis. We don't really know where this graph goes, but if we suppose that it continues off in both directions like that, then it would be true that there would be no y value which was hit by um, two x values, at least assuming that nothing fishy is going on in there. And finally, as I mentioned, a function is bijective if it's both surjective and injective. So an example of a bijective function would be 
this line y equals 3x plus 2, it is surjective because the codomain is R. And every point in R can be written in the form 3x plus 2. We did that problem earlier. And it's injective because if 3x plus 2 gives the same value in two different points, then they're not different points. It must be the same x. So every horizontal line hits the curve in exactly one point, And every vertical line hits the curve in exactly one point. We're going to look at lots more examples of surjective, injective, and bijective functions. So hopefully there'll be more opportunities to see how these two things work together.